And now we're into the epidermis, which I like to relate to the Green Mile. Now, why is that? Because the Green Mile is when the prisoner who was sentenced for execution is walking to their demise. And that's what your cells are doing in your epidermis. Your epidermis, which is on the top layer of your skin, is made of what's called stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Okay, that's a big long phrase, basically meaning it has many layers, stratified, it is flat, and it's a lining of your body, which is all true. Now, when it's stratified, it means there's many cells. So I'm going to show you how those cells actually are generated, and I'll point out what's happening as they move up in the epidermis, as well as what they are called. So let's start first with the basal layer or basal layer. I'm not sure why it's spelled like that, but these are cells on the bottom of the epidermis. Now, just to get your bearings here, these cells will be connected by proteins called hemidesmosomes, and they will be connected to underlying structures, which you should know what they are. What is right underneath the epidermal layer? Well, this is the dermis. And these hemidesmosomes are vitally important to keep these cells cemented to the connective tissue beneath. Now, this ridge right here is a very fun structure that is called the dermal papilla literally translating to skin nipple. Yes, your skin has nipples and they're called your fingerprints. So the basal layer of cells is actually pushed up by the dermis a little bit just to give a little ridge causing you to have those fingerprints, those ridges. Very cool. Now, these basal cells are stem cells. And don't get scared by these terms. Stem cell just means they like to regenerate. So just like you've probably seen in a lava lamp where there's this big clump of lava or whatever the heck is in a lava lamp, and it eventually basically pinches off and creates two, that's what the cells do. They divide, they replicate to form cells above them. So they rapidly regenerate. Now there's two types of stem cells here. The easy ones are these black ones, which are just called basal cells. And they're going to be your classic regenerative cells. They're going to divide all the way up and then follow that green mile. But this guy right here is a little different. This guy is called a melanocyte. And if you can guess, what do you think this site, this cell, is going to produce? Well, it's going to produce melanin. So it literally translates to melanin cell. Now, melanin we'll talk about when we're talking about skin color next, but it's going to protect your skin from the UV radiation. Now, this comes from the sun, and it can actually damage the DNA, the instruction manual for your cells, and actually cause these cells to turn cancerous. So we really want to protect your body from that UV radiation. Now, let's focus on when these basal cells will divide, creating the next layer of cells. Now, this layer of the epidermis is now called the stratum spinosum really translating to the layer of spiny things. Now, why, do, why are these called spiny things? Well, it's because when they actually attach to other cells, they kind of pinch off and look a little sharp on the ends. Now, to be honest, I don't see them being kind of spiky, but that's what they named them, the stratum spinosum cells. Now, as you can see, I'm drawing these connections again. Now, these guys are actually called desmosomes, which are proteins that connect cells to cells, whereas the hemidesmosomes was actually cell to connective tissue. So these desmosomes are going to keep these cells tightly attached so they don't rip apart. Now you also see these dots inside the cells and these are keratohyalin granules. I'm just going to call them keratin granules. The keratin granules, the, well keratin ends in IN. We know that it's a protein if it ends in IN, just like melanin. And this keratin is going to help protect your cells against abrasion. So already we're accumulating these proteins that one, keep the cells together in the desmosomes and also protect them from getting abrased with friction from keratin. But at the same time, these cells in the spinosum layer are actually nibbling off the melanocyte and accumulating their own melanin. And they can transfer it to the adjacent cells. And this is vital so that we get a full layer of protection with the melanin because the melanocytes are only every 10 cells or so in the basal layer. So as we can see, the cells are starting to push up. So I'm going to start listing things that happen as the cells push up so we can understand it more as a process. So the first one is they're gaining keratin and melanin. Great, so now let's say they divide again and form a new layer of cells. Great, so now let's say these basal cells divide again and push this layer up and we form a new layer. drew a few extra cells here just for good measure. Now this layer is a little thicker and this is going to be called the stratum granulosum. And the same things are here. I mean we see all the keratin inside of them, we see the melanin still in, we see the desmosomes, but you notice that the cells are starting to flatten out, right? And they're flattening out because they're actually getting squished by the cells above them, which I haven't drawn yet, and the ones below. And as you can tell they're kind of granulated, they've got a lot of granules inside, but at this point two really important things happen. The cells will actually be dead. So let's pause on that for a second. That sounds sad, right? We're killing cells off. But why are they dead in the first place? 
Well, if you remember from my core concepts video up here, we know that the blood is a river of life and goes virtually everywhere. But the blood in the skin is limited to the dermis. So the blood will be flowing through the dermis and feeding the basal cells just fine. But notice as we get further and further up, we're further away from the blood. And that means the nutrients coming from the blood can't feed these cells. It's too tightly packed. It's too far away. So therefore, they will begin to die. So they begin to die because they lose that blood supply. Now, at the same time, they will also begin to accumulate these little yellow bodies that will look like this. And these bodies, I'll draw in this orange, are called lamellar bodies. And the reason I'm drawing them kind of in this orange is because they contain lipids. And this is common for cells when they die to gain this fat inside of them. But then what do they do with it? Well, in the next layer, these lamellar bodies will actually be released out of the cells and into the extracellular space. Now, let me draw what that would kind of look like next. So here you see the lamellar bodies are released inside of this new stratum, which is going to be called the stratum lucidum, which literally translates to the light layer. But I like to think of it as the lipid layer because there's this fat accumulating here. Now, this is important because the fat will help keep the skin insulated from here down, as well as to prevent water loss from here out or water gain from outside in. So this is what makes your skin really insulated. Awesome. So actually, those are the four layers that are in all parts of your skin, but there's some parts of your skin on your body that actually have an extra orangey layer to them in your calluses, as well as on the bottom of your feet. And that's going to be called the stratum corneum. I'm going to draw all of the layers of the stratum corneum real quick. This layer of the stratum corneum, there's really no cells left. In fact, all the cells that I drew are actually dead cells that are full of that keratin. And that provides a lot of protection against abrasion. I mean, think about your, the palms of your hands, the soles of your feet. They have a lot of friction on them all day, every day. So there's a lot of cells with keratin to protect against that friction, which I told you keratin does. Wonderful. Now, the last thing that will happen to these cells right before they finally finish their green mile, which, by the way, takes around 50 days, to get from basically basal cell all the way up to the top is that the cells will lose the desmosomes. Now, why is this important that they lose desmosomes when they get to this part? Well, if you think about it, the desmosomes held the cells together. And at, once they get to the top, we want these cells to be sloughed off, discarded, right? Because we don't really need them anymore. They've been protecting us. They've been doing a great job. We need them gone. If they didn't lose these desmosomes, we would be like the skin monsters. We would just be full of dead cells and it would just accumulate and accumulate. So it's actually important that we lose those desmosomes to lose the cells. 